is the ARP Avatar from 1977. It was one of the earliest attempts at guitar synthesis. And whilst I hope in this video to demonstrate that it has its charms and it absolutely has its uses, it also has some quite fundamental flaws, which were the reason that it was a commercial failure. And it's then quite an infamous product because it played its part in the financial struggles that would see ARP ultimately go out of business about three and a half years after this was released. Now, I've already been over the history in huge detail in my feature length ARP documentary, so I'm not going to go over that again in this video. Instead, I'm going to show you what this is and what it actually does. So we start with a proprietary hexaphonic pickup designed by Ron Hoog. Uh, and a hexaphonic pickup or divided pickup, as they're sometimes known, is six pickups in one pickup. And the reason they did that is because they needed to isolate each string signal. You have to slightly butcher your guitar to attach it. But once it's in, that then comes out here as what we've identified as a, a Limo S connector. We then have this rather funky cable. So you've got another Limo S connector here. And that comes out at six pin DIN at the end, one for each string. And that goes into the front of the avatar. So the first thing we get is the straight hexaphonic preamp sound in stereo with three strings left and three strings right. And you can hear the weird stereo left right thing going on there. Ideally, I would be running this through two guitar amps rather than DI because uh, it's a bit of a peaky sound, but I don't have two amps here, unfortunately. So please accept my apologies. But uh, there's then a second option called hex fuzz, which is one of the coolest things about the avatar. So this is a fuzz circuit, but for each individual string. And because there's no crosstalk between them, ARP dubbed it the clean fuzz, and it's quite a weird sound. <laughs> So you can hear there's something familiar about it, but there's also something odd going on. And it's because it's like recording a guitar one string at a time at the same time, if you see what I'm saying. So really cool and um, really interesting, I think. You can then run the hex preamp or the hex fuzz, albeit in mono, through the synths filter and its VCA. And there's an envelope follow, which is a circuit that derives a control voltage from an incoming signal, in this case, the guitar and you can trigger the synths on board envelope generators from the guitar too. So that means that you can modulate the filter and open the amp, but from your guitar without having to keep touching the synth. And that sounds like this. So you can make a pretty huge sound from just one guitar. And bear in mind, we aren't even using the normal output of our guitar. So you could take that out and run that through some pedals and an amp, and you could have like four amps set up for an absolute cacophony, which would be awesome. Um, after the guitar stuff, you then have an entire synthesizer, and it's basically an ARP Odyssey. It's a two oscillator mono synth. Uh, it's got a couple of modifications to interface with the guitar. So you select which strings you want it to read from, and then you can play it, albeit monophonically, from the guitar. And now is as good a time as any to talk about the fundamental problems with the avatar. So if you were thinking the audio was out of sync on that last clip, it wasn't. So in order for it to convert a pitch to a CV, 
you have to give it a pitch, which means the note has already started, which means we're inherently behind. And if it did the conversion lightning fast, that might not be a problem, but lightning fast, it is not. The technology available to ARP in the mid 70s was less Max Verstappen in a Red Bull and more a pigeon on a unicycle. So out of interest, I'm gonna record simultaneously the hexaphonic signal and the synth signal from their individual outs. And I'm gonna pan one left and one right so you can hear the delay. So in the lowest octave, it's about 40 milliseconds, which is what you would dial in on a delay pedal. So it's way off. Up the octave, it halves to 20. Up another octave, it halves to 10 milliseconds. And right at the top, it's about five milliseconds. And because guitar is all about being on the beat and being tight and being in time, having a lag and not just a lag, a variable lag is a massive problem. So how do we work around the problems? Well, firstly, you can monitor the hex preamp signal, which doesn't have any delay and record the synth from its own output. And then in your door, nudge it back in time. And that sounds like this. <laughs> So that's kind of okay, but if you want it bang on, the way to do it is use a sequencer with the rear CB gate and trigger inputs, and that sounds like this. So that gives you a glimpse of what it could have sounded like if the technology was able to cope at the time. But the problem with doing it with a sequencer, of course, is that you have to predetermine the notes and then you can't improvise. So you solve one problem and create another. But there we go. A thing people used to do to get around the monophonic thing was choose just one string to run through the synth, typically the low E, and then you can play the guitar uh, normally and then just bring in that low string and the synth will come in with it. And that sounds like this. Now, if you look on the internet, you'll find numerous avatar videos, but nobody is playing it from the guitar apart from me because I'm a lunatic and it's totally valid to do that. You can just hook it up on the back uh, and it sounds great. So there we go, the ARP avatar, warts and all. So on the guitar side, uh, bearing in mind that you can still use the normal output of your guitar, being able to bring in the filtered sounds with envelope follower and the stereo sounds with the strings left and right and that hex fuzz, which is amazing, um, is really quite incredible for 1977. Then you have the synth, which is a vintage ARP synthesizer, which people are willing to pay a lot of money for because they are fantastic. So all good, and then where they meet in the middle, not so good. Uh, it doesn't quite do what they were trying to get it to do. 
Uh, it's like a prototype showing you what's going to be possible more than it is a finished product. And sure enough, guitar synthesizers came after the Avatar and are still being made to this day. And many of them include hex files, funnily enough. So sometimes being first doesn't necessarily mean you'll get to see the benefit of that. Uh, but I'm quite fond of this weird slab of a synthesizer. Uh, I have nothing else in my studio that does what it does. A uh, huge thank you to the Alan R. Perlman Foundation and Dina Perlman in particular and all the ARP people who helped me with the story of this and helped me get it going. And thank you to you for watching. The good will come right back round